Okay. First thing you want to um, know is, first of all, we there's a few different functions in your camera. And besides all of the other little detailed things, we're going to get the most, uh, um, the most probably the most misunderstood things out the way. Uh, a lot of people may hear aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and you might not know or understand what it is. So we're going to break it down and help you to understand it. Now, of course, you are no, you should know basic things like, you know, uh, frame rate, um, you know, 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and a lace video. Um, I will still go over that, but uh, these are basic things that you should know. But you know what? I'm not going to assume that you know. I'm going to talk to you about it anyway to make sure that everything is covered um, because I may have someone on here that's just like, you know, green, as my homie Stretch Man said, green. So um, anyway, there's three things that controls light. Uh, there's three things in your camera that controls the amount of light that comes into your camera, that comes into your sensor. And one of the things is your aperture. All right, so now let's get an understanding of what aperture is and what aperture does. So you have a lens, right? Aperture, first of all, aperture is, is an expandable hole inside the lens that allows a certain amount of light into the camera. Now that's in simple terms, all right? So um, if we go to another picture here, we can go to, uh, let's see this next picture. This, you see that this, remember I was explaining to you guys earlier about the 1.4? This allows, this is a lens. This allows more light into the lens. Then you have a medium aperture of 4. This allows a little less light in. Then you have a small aperture of 22. And that leaves a very, very small uh, amount of light in. Now, what happens when you leave, I mean, uh, based on how much light you allow in your camera, um, uh, based on these lenses, is going to determine how focused or how out of focus your images is going to be. So if you got a, a lens, if you got a lens and you got the aperture wide open, oops, sorry about that. You got the uh, aperture wide open at 1.4 or 1.2, then it's going to allow a lot of light in. Now, what happens when you allow a lot of light in, then whatever image you focus on, that's going to be the image that's going to be in focus. It's going to be sharp. You see the uh, eight ball, I mean the five ball here, that's in focus, everything else blurry. The tree here, that's in focus, everything else blurry. The, um... The girl and the horse here is in focus. Everything else is blurry. And, um, um, dang, I lost my thought. Actually, I was going to uh, tell you something else. But anyway, um, the wider it is, the more focus. Now, what happens is the more you start closing it, the more the entire image or the entire plane starts getting into focus. So you'll notice that a small aperture of f22 this is a really small uh, aperture, um, and we, we'll talk about the numbers in a second. But you'll notice these images, everything is in sharp focus from the beginning all the way to the end, or what they call, what they say, infinity. So from this spectrum all the way to that spectrum, from, from this you know tree all the way back to the clouds way in the back, everything is in focus. The entire plane is focused. And if we go back, actually, I should have had, had it pulled up. I apologize, ma'am. But you guys already know about the um, the amount. Here, let me, let me pull this up real quick. I'm going to pause this real fast, y'all. Okay, fam. Um, I created a diaphragm for you guys. I know we already been through this, but I'm just going to go it, over it again. Um, so I'll make sure that it's, you know, perfectly clear to you guys. So anyway, we're dealing with the aperture. Now, when it's wide open at a 1.4 or 1.8 or 1.2, we have a very narrow depth of field. So this is looking at it from the top view so that you can understand what's going on. From a top view, you got your camera here and it's, it's, it's focusing in on the subject. So whether the camera was focusing in on this 
him or the bike, the very shallow depth of field would be would be just this 1.4, which would be from this line to that line. It's a very small depth of field. So you everything that's inside of your depth of field is going to be in focus. So if you want to uh, break down what depth of field means, you can almost kind of say detail of focus or detail in focus. So you say depth in field or DIF, depth, depth in whatever. But anyway, it's, it's, what's, it's everything detail in focus. So whatever you put in your camera on, that would be the details in focus. All right. So now what happens if we open up the, uh, the aperture? Then we have at a 2.8. Then we have a little bit more open. So the depth of field is going to be from this point to that point. Now, this is not exactly, fam. This is just a kind of like a summary so that you can understand how the camera is working, all right? So you'll notice right here, we have this little gap. This gap from this point to that point, everything is in focus. The Heineken bottle, <laughs> you know, I had to throw that up in there. The man and also the tree. This is a bush, right? This is in focus. But anything that falls out of that plane or out of that DOF, depth of field, or um, detail in focus, then it's going to get blurry. So it's going to start off blurry, then it's going to get more and more blurry as you see the trees back here. And as you see anything in front of this field, this plain field, it's going to be out of focus, and anything after this plain field is going to be in focus. So if you decide, again, to focus, use a 2.8, but you want to focus on the front of this bike, then that m amount is what's going to be in focus. And to help you understand it, we go to F8. Now, notice this. F8 from this point all the way to that point. Now you'll notice the bike is in focus, sharp focus. You'll notice the, uh, the artist, the actor is in focus, and the trees is in focus. Now, um, the higher you go, the tighter you make that hole. The tighter you make that hole. Let me pull these up now. Um, the higher you go, the tighter you make this hole right here. And the tighter you make that hole, the more things is in focus. You see? So if we go back to this, let me cut this off. We go back to this. The higher you go, the tighter you make the hole, the more things is in focus. You Do you understand? I hope you do. Um, and the, wide, the, the more open it is, the less is in focus just this little bitty line now as far as try not to get the numbers confused don't really don't think about it too much trying to figure out well why if it's closed why is the number you know low but you know uh, is is high you know the number is high shouldn't it be open wide just don't even worry about it just 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 kind of just fix your mind on you know, 1.4, 1.2 is really open, and that's going to always give me a good depth of field. And, and um, you know, the smaller apertures, you know, if I got a number of F8, F16, F22, then things is going to get more in focus. Now, I'm going to show you another example. Well, let me show you this real quick. Aperture controls how much light gets into the camera. Control the, control the size of the aperture by changing the f-stops. So... This is the aperture, and the f-stops is 2.8. Actually, they can go lower than that. You know, you're already familiar with the 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22. And this is the openness of it. So the more open, the more light you allow in. The less open, the less amount of light you allow in. And the more open, you'll have a shallow depth of field, and um, shallow depth of field mean, you know, very small amount of detail and a fine line. And greatest depth of field is uh, a lot of detail, a lot of detail. So it's, it's, it is, I don't know, it seems a little confusing. But then now let's look at a, let's not look at this here. We was looking at this, 1.4, we see that strip depth of field. And then we see the 2.8, we see the bigger room and then we see the f8 now of course it goes up in increments and each increment allows more you know more uh, uh, space to be in detail now let me show you looking forward frontward 
here we have, oops, sorry. Here we have this. This is an aperture of 1.4. So you notice he's in focus and the background is blurry. But now if you was looking at it from the top, you will understand that, you know, there's just a little bitty strip. A 1.4, there's just a little strip of what's being in focus. Now, you see the shutter speed is at 500 and ISO at 100, but we're going to get to those in a second. I just want you to understand what aperture is and aperture control, you know, um, what aperture is f-stop. Okay, so the aperture here is at 4. You notice that he's still in detail, but the background is getting a little bit uh, in detail as well. And you'll see that um, this hole is kind of like halfway open. You see that there? And the same thing with this. Now with this, the, the F is at 16. You'll notice he's in focus and everything else is also in focus as well. And the higher you go, the more like those people way down there and the stop sign and all of that, all of that would be in focus. So if that can help you understand that a little bit, um, you know, you can understand more now what aperture is. Now, we, we, I'll explain to you how this can benefit you as far as when you start shooting your subjects, but you got to understand what the shutter speed does and how to use, how you would utilize the ISO. So that you put all three of those together to create the proper exposure for your image. So let's move on and let's understand a little bit more about shutter speed.